Travis. Uh, firstly, thank you for coming. Thanks um, for having us. Yeah, well, it's, it's our pleasure. You work for Hope 103.2. That's where I bumped into you, I think. Yeah, with Linda. Who Linda, knows Linda? Linda Lou from our comedy yeah. day. Yeah, she's, she's got like, groupies everywhere. She, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Everyone loves Linda. Now, Travis, uh, firstly, let, let's hear your story. How did you become a Christian? Yeah, sure. So I grew up in a, I guess what you'd call a Christian-ish home. So I'm Italian. Any Italians in the house? Yeah. So mainly Catholic, uh, Catholic families and so forth. So, but we never went to church, never prayed. Um, but we called ourselves Christians. So we went to church at Easter, Christmas. It wasn't probably till year four that um, my year four teacher, William Carey, actually said, you know, hands up those who want to give their life to God and, you know, become a Christian. And my friend and I put up our hand and said the Lord's Prayer and, yeah, never looked back. That's where it began, eh? Yeah. Fantastic. Year four. So, okay, well, let's fast forward to the time where you decide to make yourself apply for Big Brother. Yeah. 2008. Yeah. A few years wow. ago now. I know, time's running away, bro. How do you remember that? I, I saw it actually on the YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was shocked because I thought it was last year. <laughs> no. Now, um, Travis, can you tell us uh, why did you decide to go on Big Brother? Yeah, sure. Um, I wanted to go on the show to show people Jesus' love, I guess, to not necessarily Bible bash them, but it was a good opportunity to do so. Yeah. Being locked in a house for three months with a bunch of people who, you know, have never been to church, it's a great opportunity. But um, I also wanted to show them Jesus' love through my actions as well. Obviously, you know, your typical big brother housemate isn't, a raging Christian, um, traditionally, not, not traditionally, yeah. but yeah, yeah, things changed that year. Okay, so, okay, you make yourself available. Now, they, how do they do it? There's, they, you have to sort of qualify? Yeah, so the interview process is huge. It's like 20 different auditions. And um, they kind of segmented the Christians. They wanted a Christian that year. Yeah, Christian guys in 2008 was the, the popular thing to be. So there was a group of about 20, 20 dudes um, out of, you know, across Australia that were all Christian and, yeah, competing for that. Yeah. Why do you think you got picked? Because of my good looks. Yeah, I, don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. God, God definitely had a yeah. big part in that. So yeah. I'm very grateful that he gave me the opportunity. So, Now tell us a bit about, um, so you're in that community, three months? Yeah, three months. You ended up being fourth in the, yes. in the process. Okay, yes. so you didn't win, but you, you, know, you, got, you did really well. Um, I don't know how you do really well. I suppose you don't get voted out. Is that how you do really well? <laughs> my mum voted a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was good. It was good. Praise God. So, yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, how, what was it like, what kind of opportunities did you have being a Christian and, and sort of giving Christian witness and like what would we have seen that would have kind of set you apart perhaps different from the others? Or yeah, something? right. Well, I got to take my Bible into the house. That was a pretty good, I guess, start. Um, got to bring that in the first night. I guess the way that you respond to people in the house as well. Traditionally, uh, Big Brother housemates are renowned um, for gossiping. Um, anyone watch this year? Big Brother? Yeah. How oh. frustrating is it when they're like talking really about... <laughs> Don't hold that against her. That's okay. <laughs> We're into grace here. <laughs> grace and truth. Um, yeah. <laughs> So how frustrating is it when they're all gossiping about each other, backstabbing each other? And I just really wanted to make a, a I guess, a, a conscious decision not to do that and kind of really be um, loving and uplifting and, you know, kind of plant seeds where I could. So, you know, the kind of stand, I'll be praying for you or like, um, yeah, Jesus loves you. Those, those kind of lines that really, you know, sow into people's lives. So... Now, sometimes you got into issues. They wanted to know. They knew you were the Christian, the conservative, straight dude. So they, they kind of wanted to know your view on a whole lot of issues. How did mm. you kind of approach that without kind of sounding like you're judgmental and Bible bashing? Yeah, right. Um, so a, lot, a couple of the issues that came up, um, one that's quite popular at the moment is the issue of gay marriage. So gay marriage came up 
a lot in the house. Um, so I guess it was kind of that um, that part of the Bible where the woman who was caught in adultery gets brought to Jesus and Jesus was like, those who haven't sinned can throw the first stone. You know that, that passage? Yeah. John 8. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you're the pastor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm paid to know. Yeah. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to condemn them, but I didn't want to show that I condoned it either. So oh. kind of Jesus loves the sinner, not the sin, oh. type of thing. So, Excellent. yeah, it was it was a good opportunity. Yeah, that's nicely said, actually. Mm. And what about did you get to share about Jesus dying on the cross for their forgiveness as well? Yeah, yeah. So there was um, you probably don't remember because it was a quite a while ago, but there was this la older lady, um, the nana in the house. Do you guys remember Terry at all? Yeah. <laughs> so Terry <laughs> is like a raging atheist, like massive not loving Jesus whatsoever. <laughs> so she was an awesome opportunity to kind of talk to the others about God because she would often challenge me about, you know, why would Jesus love us, that kind of thing. So, yeah, it was good. Excellent, excellent. Now, they kind of set you up. I mean, there's techniques that they have. Like if we go behind the scenes, is what we see on TV what actually is how it really is. Like, how close is it to it? How much is is kind of manipulation happening? Yeah, right. So, um, the good thing about Big Brother is they give you a whole heap of clothes. So you go on the show, um, you come in with your, your suitcase, they take out everything that they don't want you to wear, and they replace it with stuff they do want you to wear. Um, so it was awesome because I got a whole heap of free stuff. <laughs> um, I just, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you need a wardrobe change, just apply to go and be brother. Um, but yeah, it just means that they try to create certain characters right. in the show. So, for example, like anything with white on it was removed from my suitcase. Really? So, and they replaced it with like pink and blue and like all these bright colours that I was like, wow. I need sunglasses to look at these clothes, but that, that's what they so, were trying to create. So they're basically moulding a, a character out of you to fit within the, pro, fit with, fit within the show. To a certain extent, yeah, to a certain yeah. extent. I mean, the, it is reality TV, but there's like little elements that they play with right. and stuff. So. You, you mentioned that uh, they would steal things from people and hide them and... Yeah. Yeah, so the walls are all like fake walls. So um, the producers of the show can open them, take the housemates' belongings out and put them in, you know, say another housemate's bag to kind of set up conflict in the house. Um, so when you're, on, when you're on staples, for example, like living off bread and chickpeas, which wasn't a happy situation in the bedroom because there was a lot of gas going, <laughs> going on in that stage but like an orange is a big thing right so we got like one orange a day so they would take people's oranges and put them in the other housemates bags so you're like you stole my orange right. and it doesn't sound like a big deal but yeah when you're hungry yeah an orange is an orange yeah <laughs> so yeah so how you manage that i guess um well yeah you gotten on to the fact that there's um, you know, fishy stuff going on. It probably takes about a couple of weeks, but in the first, you know, two weeks, there was a bit of tension over oranges and, and toilet paper. Toilet paper was the other big thing because you each, everyone had a roll of toilet paper and um, you had to use your own roll. Um, and you can imagine if you're eating a lot of chickpeas, you're going to the bathroom a lot. So, Travis, you could be telling me more information than I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay, get pretty yeah. protective. Okay, so that yeah. just creates conflict and conflict creates good drama and that's mm. what keeps, keeps ratings up. And It's been beautiful to see you actually trying to be light and, and truth in that situation. They did take the Bible from you, didn't they, early on? Yeah, so first night they took the Bible away from us straight away before right. we actually got into the house. So, right. so for mm. three months you're out the Word but still bearing witness to Jesus in that situation. Yeah, still being able to pray and I guess talk to people about God so excellent yeah. now um, you they thought that was going to be the last year of Big Brother yes and I thought my <laughs> prayers were going to be answered but uh, well they weren't that way anyway can I just ask uh, you actually got to see those the Big Brother yeah yeah what can you tell us so that I 
Probably the same guy's still doing it this year. Well, really? one of them, yeah. So there's five different voices of Big Brother. Um, one of them works in radio. I would like to say that he works for Hope 103.2. Who, wait, who listens to Hope 103.2? Yeah, there we go. Because um, you work for Hope. I work for Hope 103.2. Yeah. No, um, he works for another radio station in Sydney. Um, but there's basically five of them. And, um, yeah, it's really weird because he's got this really big voice. It's like, this is Big Brother. And then you see him and he's like this kind of weedy little <laughs> like dude he's like yeah he's younger than me and he's got this massive right okay yeah and so there's five of them and you saw three or four of them yeah three or four okay yeah. well they'll remain a secret i think you're contracted that way so let's keep it that way <laughs> i could tell you who they were but i'm really not okay we are. <laughs> travis i just want to say thank you so much brother for sharing uh, that story it's really good for us to get the inside track on some of this stuff mm. to see how things are kind of manufactured a bit but more importantly to see that you wanted to be light and salt in a really difficult situation and um, and you kept your Christian witness right through and for that we thank God for you brother. Oh thanks mate, yeah, good to be here. Let's give a round of applause.